Get the label. No, I think we're well, okay. here. Yeah. Uh, you wished to have some personal things and backgrounds and things like that. Okay, I studied in Zurich, the university. I made my diploma in algebraic topology and my dissertation in infinite dimensional analysis. This had to be developed because we wanted to make the diffeomorphism group to sort of a Lie group. And uh, for that, oh, what, a, e? a Lie a e type of so, 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 group. So. Not a real Lie group because of the exponential, but at least a differential group, as we said. And we needed a differential calculus which, uh, had, which, of which the background was a uh, Cartesian closed category. And then later I was interested in, uh, in differential geometry, material deformations and things like that. And since you know, a few years I'm interested in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory the background art of which this work I made together with a former assistant of mine, Frau Sonia Kurz, was we wanted to understand why, or at least where, the Heisenberg group shows up. And it's rather remarkable how broad the field of the Heisenberg group's appearance is, of course, in signal theory, where the ambiguity, ambiguity function, ambiguity function, is just a rewriting of uh, the Schrödinger representation. Then, of course, in quantum mechanics, uh, where one had to use also Schrodinger's representation and then the symmetries of it, the metaplectic representation. Uh, next is uh, in quantum field theory where I want to uh, talk a little about. And uh, funny enough also in thermodynamics not only in thermodynamics, also in information theory. Now, that's an interesting link, and I don't, but I don't talk about that. I talk about the more simple thing, namely about natural field quantization in R3. That's a three here. And not all transparencies are that weak, I hope. Uh, but it's an old one, so I took it. What we start with is a tree space, a Euclidean tree space. And in it, we think of a manifold. Okay? We think of the tree space as the, uh, the space with the zero uh, carried out. So E dot, I would call that. As a vector field, you might uh, think of the Coulomb field. Think of a charge at the point zero, and then you take the Coulomb field. And of course, uh, the vector field in three space splits into the identity, which says at where, at which point, I want to have to, I want to know the value of the field, and that's called the principal part. And for the whole mechanism to work, I need that field singularity free. That seems at first glance a too strong restriction, but not at the second. Because you can delete the singularities, and then you are confronted with the influence of the topology to the quantization. And then that's rather interesting. What we want to do is we want to find, what I want to find here, uh, for associate, uh, 
representation to x, such that the field operators emanating of it satisfy the canonical commutation relations. I will tell you eventually what I mean by that. Now give me a quick outline of the constructions I want to do. First of all, one has to understand that given a singularity-free vector field, there is much more to it. For instance, if you have an electromagnetic wave, you have, let's say, a plane wave, then you have the pointing vector, and that would be the field, and you have, of course, a plane perpendicular to it, moving forward. But at each time, you have the, the, the <coughs> orthogonal splitting of the T-space. This is the plane, and here would be the field vector, the value of the vector field at the points. The E and the B field will be here, and the oscillations are taking place in this plane while the wave moves forward. <coughs> of course, this is a setup for three space. Uh, 2 plus 1, that's the E, and uh, here it is uh, most, uh, that's the most simple case of the story. One could do it, of course, in a, over a four-dimensional, uh, in a four-dimensional space or a four-dimensional manifold, Lorentz manifold. But let's stick with that. That's the same part. The construction goes as follows. Here is the vector field. That's an integral curve. At a point, you make this decomposition. You have the value of the field vector in E and orthogonal to it, this plane, a of x dot, x is the point here. Now, that plane inherits, due to that vector, which within the quaternions is an imaginary unit, if it is squeezed down to a unit vector, this plane inherits a, a complex structure, a natural complex structure. Now you do this not only on one point, but at every point. Of course, then you get a line bundle. You do it at every point here, you have the same splitting all over. And of course, the field vector carries a real line. And of course, this splitting of the tree space, the two plus one, that inherits uh, Heisenberg structure, simply because you can rotate this vector by 90 degrees. Sorry, which vector do you, do you rotate by 90? Uh, this one. The, the pointing vector? Yeah, the pointing vector. vector. Yeah, it is the cross product it produces, of course, that gives the symplectic yeah. structure. Yeah. Because the cross product is along this one and then you evaluate it along that one. So, so far, we have not only a complex line bundle, but also a Heisenberg algebra bundle. This Heisenberg algebra bundle <coughs> gives the rise uh, to uh, the module, to, to the space of sections. It's in a two space, but we work with the, the sections only which do fall off very rapidly so that integrals exist. So the Schwartz sections. This infinite dimensional space is then complemented by an extra line to give this space again a structure of the infinite dimensional Heisenberg group. But here on this space the symplectic structure will be degenerate. But that doesn't matter. That's just the center. It's a large center. Usually in the Heisenberg group or algebra, that's the center. And here one would have the 